How you format and where you place your communication is critical to your success. This means reaching and maintaining some level of creativity has to be part of your strategy. Even though development cooperation doesn't generate news in a more narrow sense, the content produced still faces tough competition for attention, not only in the media. It could be in the email inbox, where there are many other emails to be opened. The communication has to stand out, be shareable, quotable, likable. Sometimes I hear from projects that they don't believe in making their communication attractive because they had a very special target group comprising mainly scientists or because their content was just not sexy. Everyone has a reason to claim they're different and try to get out of this. As understandable as this may be, it's no excuse to face the competition for attention. It's simply there and if you want impact, you need to face it. And remember, there is no target group where the individuals were not drawn to attractiveness. So, to ensure your messages get where you want them to get, not everything has to be short and snappy or sexy. You'll need to see what works for your target group, not only for you, remember? So it's important to think about the resources you'll need to carry out your strategy beforehand. And don't forget to think about how you'll ensure a good level of creativity. It's important and difficult to maintain throughout. Now, here's a little tip. Humor. That's a great way to stick out and be remembered, especially in development cooperation, because development cooperation hardly ever uses humor in its communication. Okay. When you plan messages, you'll begin with thinking about the format that makes the most sense for each message. Let's say you want to communicate an update on how a political situation in the country has forced your client to change the approach of the project. This can be complex, politically sensitive information and a written form may not be ideal for this type of communication. You may decide, in this case, that a video statement from your project lead or maybe someone from the head office be better. So, resource planning is about thinking about what you'll need to make that video happen. For example, does your head office person usually read from a script? In that case, who can write a proper script? Someone on your team? Or will you need a consultant? How about how the video will be recorded? Will you need a teleprompter? Is an online recording good enough? Or do you need to hire a professional video crew? How will the video be edited once it's shot? Do you need to find a freelance editor? Or do you have one on retainer? All these details can make the difference between actually making that video happen when the time comes or falling short of getting to the final product. So, resource planning as part of your communication strategy also includes thinking about project partners, service providers and tools. In the same way you thought about your resource planning, when it comes to the format of the communication, you will have to do the th same in terms of distributing that information. Where do your messages need to go to get the most attention? Do you have the experts and tools in place to distribute your communication? Or do you need to think about the best way to get these pieces into place first? Finally, don't forget that development cooperation is all about partnership. Involving your partners and using their dissemination channels might not only be a matter of technical effectiveness, but a political imperative to achieve your project goals. When it comes to communications objectives within your country of operation, the so-called partners often have better reach to target audiences there than your organization as such has it. For example, let's say your team plans to announce that the project has received substantial additional funds to cover disaster preparedness measures and you want to discuss with the stakeholders the most efficient use of them. As you plan your communication approach for this announcement, 
you should think about how the beneficiaries of this work can help share your messages with your audience. Thinking about what this means, you'll, enga you'll engage these partners early and often, building a stronger relationship and integrating your communication strategy, ensuring even bigger reach and impact of your messages. Clearly, this is going to be part of your constant strategy thinking. It makes all the difference whether you are aiming at audiences in the donor countries or in the partner country. So you better separate them, otherwise you're going to get confused. Building resource planning into your communication strategy is not the most exciting assignment, but you'll find that it will make all the differences to effectively carry out your strategy when the time comes. Spend the time up front and you'll thank yourself when you're in the midst of implementing your strategy. As the brilliant cognitive psychologist Amos Tversky once said, you waste years by not being able to waste hours. So print out that statement, hang it on the walls of your meeting room before your meeting on communication strategy starts. Now, from my experience, development cooperation projects run constantly out of time when it comes to implementing communications activity. Besides hurried planning, this is due to their lack of experienced communications professionals on board in the first place, or projects missing the opportunity to hire senior consultants early on to help them with conceptualizing and planning communications activity. This is probably the most serious omission in communications work by development projects. Planning communications activity without really knowing what needs to be done and not consulting with someone who does. Well, the good thing about this is what? You can very easily avoid it. 